Madam President, hurricane season started June 1st. And although we, of course, feel that particularly in Louisiana, I'll note that last year a hurricane hit Southern California. So this is something which can happen all over our nation. And people, know, people in Louisiana know what people in California have learned. When there's a hurricane, there can be flooding. Now, we, hopefully people, I say we as we in Louisiana, hopefully people all over know how to prepare. But this year, unfortunately, fewer people in Louisiana and fewer people nationwide will be able to count on the National Flood Insurance Program to help them in case they do flood. The National Flood Insurance Program, or the NFIP, was created as a safety net for the most vulnerable Americans. And the stereotype is that this is only for rich people who build properties on coastal islands um, in which they are bound to flood. The reality is these are working families. These are folks that have no place else to move. These are folks who have spent decades in a community and have never flooded, yet nonetheless are left without the protection of the National Flood Insurance Program. The NFIP covers 4.7 million American homes, but because of the new FEMA risk assessment system called Risk Rating 2.0, there has been an unprecedented spike in insurance premiums, making them unaffordable, causing people to drop their coverage. Now, I speak to constituents constantly about flood insurance, and, and I just want to, if I can, channel my constituents onto the floor of the United States Senate, Senate and perhaps through C-SPAN, perhaps through the congressional record, speak to the nation from folks who feel as if they are not being heard. I recently heard from a constituent in La Rose, Louisiana, who switched from the NFIP to a private insurance carrier because he could not afford his national flood insurance plan. Now, the private insurance plan isn't cheap. It's $2,200 a year. But he would have paid NFIP somewhere between $4,500 and $5,000 a year, and that was two years ago. Now, I note that the private plan is cheaper, although it is not cheap, which suggests that maybe the National Flood Insurance Program, maybe they have things built into it that don't, aren't required to be there. Now, by the way, his house is six feet above sea level, but NFIP ignores that. The way the National Flood Insurance Program rates a home is not by how much you've elevated above sea level, but by, but by the zone in which you live. So if you're surrounded by homes on slabs, but you're like elevated, you get rated just the same as they. According to his neighbors, the last time this area flooded was Hurricane Juan in 1985, but his property did not flood. Now, this story isn't unique or uncommon. Families across Louisiana, across the country, are experiencing the same situation. Uh, you'll love the names in Louisiana, but here's another one. One retired couple living in Bayou Lafourche, uh, meaning the Fork, near Raceland, Louisiana. They dropped their national flood insurance policy because premiums rose from $500 to $2,500 annually. Now, some people might say, oh my gosh, $2,500, just not a lot of money. For a family living in Bayou Lafourche, $2,500 is more than they can afford. Now, the premium increases are capped at 18% a year, but 18% compounded upon 18% compounded upon 18% quickly adds. This couple, lives down the road from them, his flood insurance is going from $500 to $6,300. Obviously, this is not sustainable for your typical homeowner. Now, by the way, if you buy a new policy, then you are subject to the new rates right away, meaning, for example, you'd be charged $6,300 off the bat, and you wouldn't start off at the lower amount and work your way up. So this brings us to a family in Lockport, Louisiana. They just bought a new home and chose not to have flood insurance because the premium would have been too unaffordable. Now, they have the option that other homeowners don't have. Um, most mortgages in Louisiana require home buyers to get flood insurance. And so if you take a mortgage, you've got to buy it, which leads us to the business owner. He invested $1.2 million in a brand new office building and warehouse in the town of Cutoff, Louisiana. They're behind a levy system that has never failed, and they elevated the office seven feet off the ground. 
He tells me that if he had taken a mortgage, he would have had to pay tens of thousands of dollars of combined insurance between the flood insurance and the property insurance, and it would have been more than his actual mortgage. He says, my gosh, why would any business locate here if they could build somewhere else cheaper and with less red tape? Which tells us that not only is risk rating 2.0 charging pretty exorbitant rates for people who have never flooded, but it is stifling communities. It is eliminating economic growth. It is making people who live there move and keeping people who would like to live there from moving to there. There's a man in Butte, Louisiana, who told me that it told my office his premium will increase to over $8,000 a year over the next 13 years. His flood insurance before risk rating 2.0, $570. At the current rate, he'll be paying more for flood insurance than his mortgage in two years. I've said this before on the Senate floor and we'll say again, someone who has never flooded should not be paying more for their flood insurance than they are for their mortgage. There's a constituent in Montego, Louisiana, who might lose his home altogether because he can't afford to keep it. He's a Korean War veteran. He and his wife are both in their 80s. They took out a reverse mortgage on their house several years ago to help pay medical bills. They live behind a 12-foot levee, but their reverse mortgage requires, requires them to carry flood insurance, and that now costs them $6,500 a year. And that's on top of what he's paying for his homeowners. If their flood insurance continues to rise, they will give up their home. And that's not right. Now, now I speak to my fellow legislators. We are elected to serve. If we are failing to address the issue of the National Flood Insurance Program, and folks like this, this Korean War veteran and his wife in their 80s are driven out of their home because FEMA decided they're going to develop a new system to assess, but that system has flaws, but we don't address it. We're not doing our job. And by this, by channeling these voices, I'm asking that we in this body would work to address these very human needs of fellow Americans. Now, some of these stories are more dramatic than others, but all have the common theme. They didn't flood, but they can't afford their insurance. Well, if you can't afford insurance and you don't flood anyway, then you're quite likely to drop your insurance. Now, that's too bad. Because what that's going to do to the National Flood Insurance Program is create what is called an actuarial death spiral. If the low-risk people who don't flood are paying such high premiums that they drop their coverage, then all the remaining risk is put upon the remaining policyholders, which means they pay more. And there's going to be some of those who drop because they can't afford. And it continues to concentrate the cost of the risk upon a smaller and smaller group of people until ultimately no one can afford this. We're setting the program up, or at least FEMA is setting up the program for collapse. FEMA itself has forecast that over 20% of policyholders will leave the program within 10 years. Now is the time for Congress to act. But I want to be clear, this is not just a Louisiana or a Gulf Coast issue. I opened up by speaking about a hurricane hitting Southern California. This is an issue that affects the entire country. We're seeing, if you look just by cost, the areas that are dark are those that have had over $1 billion in claims. So the mid-Atlantic states, the Northeast, including New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. If you go, of course, the Gulf Coast, including Texas, Missouri, but all the way out to California. These are the areas. Now, if you want over $50 million, then those are also these other 10 states. This is a nationwide issue. Um, I'm pleased to say we have a bipartisan solution. I urge my colleagues to come to talk to me about the National Flood Insurance Program Reauthorization Reform. And this bipartisan, by uh, um, Northeast, Gulf Coast, Democrat, Republican, uh, liberal, conservative uh, kind of perspectives that have been included in have come up with this solution. And this would make risk rating 2.0 transparent, and it would make it affordable, it would make it accountable. We need a way forward, because if these stories just make one thing clear, that doing nothing is not an option. Doing nothing is a disservice to fellow Americans. 
With that, I yield.